All right, welcome to this next uh, short study skills presentation. Um, I am in no way a master of note taking, and there are innumerable ways we can show kids how to take notes. Um, what this really concerns about, this is even more elementary than whether it's the Cornell method or any other method of taking notes. This is just basically what nonverbal and verbal cues can we read in a class that a teacher is using to tell us to take notes? So title of presentation, when do I take notes in class? And I usually start asking my students, let's make a list. And they get most of them on their own. I'll also tell you that whether it's at faculty meetings or mostly like off-campus conferences or, you know, all of us that are adults watching this know that this is an adult thing too. I've been at conferences off campus where a presenter will say, okay, write this information down. It's important. And, you know, a room full of teachers, most of whom they're just looking at the air open mouthed. So this is an adult thing too. And um, really, really important. If uh, I tell my students, if you study really hard all your notes and you learn them really well, but you only have 70% of the notes, how is you going to get to 70? So this is a really, really important subject. First, the most obvious one, but it's really, really good to do well. So when do you take notes? One, when the teacher says, write this down. And I put a snarky duh there. You don't have to put that. But again, uh, every time I say to students, write this down, there's one or two guys just staring at me as if they need me to say that three times or as if they're thinking I'm kind of joking, you know, or being ironic. Um, this is one of those examples, you know, not everybody's a great writer or a great scientist or a great mathematician. All of you can choose to do the easy things well. You can pass in your work on time, you know. You can you can format essays correctly. Um you know, basic things. Anytime a teacher says, write this down, you can choose to do it. Two, when the teacher writes something on the board, most of us don't love writing on the board. We'd rather be conversing with you. But if a teacher uses her slides as the board and wants you to write stuff, I have colleagues who tell students if it's on a slide, you write it down. And then some teachers use the board and, and kind of old school, write it out. If it's written on the board. There's a really good chance the teacher wants you to write it. So whether she says, write this down or use writes on the board. Those are two really, you know, good signals to, to write it down in your notes. Third, when the teacher repeats herself, if your English teacher is going over Shakespeare's biography and says, William Shakespeare was born on April 23rd, 1564, April 23rd, 1564. That's just one verbal way, a clue, a, that the teacher doesn't want to have to say, write this down constantly. So repeating herself is a way to basically tell you to write it down. Always really, really good to pay attention to that. Fourth, take notes in class when the teacher changes the volume of her voice, usually louder. <clears throat> so in that previous example, some teachers would repeat themselves. Other teachers would say, Shakespeare was born April 23rd, 1564. And they get louder and that's their way of saying write this down like they don't want to say write this down for the whole class so that's like another trick they use they change the volume of their voice five another little cue teachers use to tell you to write something down is changing the speed of their voice shakespeare was born april 23rd 1564 that's a way to give you time to write it down right <clears throat> And last but not least, uh, certain classes, and I'm thinking science, I'm thinking social studies, there are lists, like if you're going over World War II, ostensibly the person could say, you know, what is there, 11 here? We're going to go over the 11 major causes of World War II today. And right away in class, you should immediately know, write the number 11 somewhere and say, all right, I need to go home with 11. Probably going to be tested on 11. And I asked my students, what happens if you have 10 at the end of class? You raise your hand and you say, excuse me, I might have miscounted or not gotten the notes, but then you ask for clarification. But um, teachers starting a list is really helpful. We hear speakers do this all the time. My headmaster will do this. You know, the school is uh, focusing on four issues this year. And, you know, if I'm in the audience, I'll go, okay, cool. So there's four things. I'm going to pay attention to the next four things. Uh, politicians do this. You know, my immigration plan has four steps. And you go, okay, four steps. So again, pay attention. Um, 
I would say, regardless of whether it's write this down, the board, repetition, volume, speed, or list, if you're in class and you've zoned out for a while, if you're in class and you missed something and you didn't zone out, but you missed something, you have two choices. Your first choice is later on to ask a friend who has good notes for help. Your second choice is to see the teacher either in real time by raising your hand, or if you feel weird about that, emailing the teacher and saying, um, here are my notes. Did I miss anything? Cause I think, I think there was a couple of minutes where I missed just ask for help. You know, you don't want to, be penalized because you missed some notes. You want to study all the notes, but um, your teachers will help you take notes for their specific classes because math notes will differ from social study notes, which will differ from biology notes. But these cues kind of go across the disciplines and your subjects. And it's really just a matter of paying attention to little things teachers do to signal to you that you need to write things down.